Thank you, Marcel, for sharing your personal experience of being touched by the living presence of God throughout your working life. On many levels, your accounts resonate with many of us in the room, and I'll pick out several in a moment. You also made many, made many observations of the important role of Catholic Social Services Network and our mutual responsibility in making a positive difference. You also brought the presentation alive with your with meaning and depth of purpose with the story of Mark, of the unwell woman. And it's always good to be reminded of these kind of analogies. As we all struggle with issues of exclusion, poverty, judgment and discrimination. Now more than ever, we need to be reminded of the living presence of our loving God. We are living in times full of conflict and hardship for many. We are living in a polarised society in terms of wealth and influence and serious global issues such as the displacement of so many millions of people who have lost their homelands and where many refugees and asylum seekers are refused entry into many countries, including our own. Members of the St Vincent de Paul Society are reminded daily of the diverse need and the extent of, the, of this need in our communities as we go about our home visits, our special works projects, Vinnie stores and soup van involvement in our communities. I was very touched by your account of your great Uncle Ozzy. Although each person's path is to become a, uh, uh, to becoming a Vincentian differs, many of us will relate to the poignant story of this humble man who at the very much was a living presence of God. His qualities, his humility, his preference for the poor, his disregard for his own comfort, we can all think of Vincentians who live out these also. I'm sure, like all Vincentians, he felt he gained as much out of his service to others as he gave. I'd like to respond in particular to the sort of key messages that I believe were very pertinent to our members and the, the broader community of the society. Early on you stated, we only know ourselves in relation to each other. What a powerful statement. And it goes hand in hand with another statement you included, we're all created in the image and the likeness of God. How many of us know this intuitively? or have to remind ourselves in our most challenging encounters with people we serve. It's not easy, but it's profoundly important cornerstone which Vincentians must hold in their hearts and minds in our personal encounters. And it relates very much to another of your key messages. We confront our own vulnerability as we connect with each other's vulnerability. How often have we been confronted on our encounters on home visits, on soup vans, or on the conference assistance centres? You brought this experience alive for us, Marcel, with your, with your description of the uncaring nurse. Embracing our common humanity requires us to suspend judgement and remain generous and open in spirit, even when we, really, we are really confronted in our encounter with each other. It is in these encounters that we face our own fragility, 
that we are shaped as people in these confronting times. Many of us call upon the example of Frederick Ozenham. What would he do in this situation? If we can follow his example, the living presence of God shines true. As you have done in your life, Marcel, we can all be inspired by the example, by the example of giants in terms of compassion and utter commitment to mission. You are very fortunate to have early on the example of your great Uncle Ozzy. And you also mentioned John Falzon. We've all been nourished by his example. There are many other examples and many who are invisible. Going quietly about the work of God in their conferences and special works. The Society in Victoria, every year and for four years now, honoured five or so of these wonderful members who exemplified the living presence of God in their involvement with the society. And they are always surprised about the fuss. A true mark of these incentions, like your great uncle Ozzie, they are not in it for the accolades. We recognise, however, that in celebrating these members, we are reinforcing the undertaking of the mission of the society. We must all live out the example of Frederick Ozenham and enact the living presence of God. The society is confronted, confronting our diminishing numbers, at least through the traditional structure of the conferences, we have largely comprised older members who are mostly still engaged in their local church. Our special work, such as suit vans, conference special works projects and Vinnie stores, are comprised of a more diverse age, faith and non-faith based. We embrace and actively encourage the involvement of all who demonstrate the right outlook and commitment. We are right, however, to remind ourselves of the link our work and the society has back to the church. As you gravely reflect, reflected, it is not a good time in the history of the Catholic Church. This is why the true work of the church, the ministry to those in need, so shaped by Catholic social teaching, must move to the front and be on display. How we conduct ourselves must reflect on the very best of what the church is all about. We're all in relationship with the people of God, with professional, preferential treatment to the poor and to the marginalised. We must focus on the relational, not the institutional. This challenges us all to think on a daily basis and our governance settings. How can we do what we do better? What obstacles must be overcome? Marcel, it has been truly a memorable Ozenham lecture. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and wisdom and for your own example as the leader in the church sector who so ethically lived out the presence of God. You have shone a light on many issues that will help members find hope and inspiration in their valuable work. Let us look forward with faith and hope. And please join with me in thanking Marcel. Thank you.